Hey, welcome to the Bass Masters. That's Ronnie Moore. I'm Tommy Sanders. We are with you here, and we are getting closer, ever closer to that magic time when we start the 2024 season, the Bass Master Elite Series. And Ronnie, I think uh, we need to do a preview. We need to do a little more in-depth preview of what's coming up during the year. First, let's talk about 2023 and that great schedule took us all the way from Okeechobee up to the St. Lawrence. We got the best of South Carolina. We have got back to the Sabine, some good Alabama stuff as well. It was a good season. It was a good schedule. Yeah, and it made for a great angler of the year and rookie of the year race when you're thinking about what Brandon Cobb and Kyle Welcher all the way up until basically the final day of the season they were battling it out for AOI then you've got Joey Sefuentes and Kyoya Fujita battling out for rookie of the year until the final day of the season the schedule provided a lot of twists and turns we think about it's the technological revolution you know technology took over the sport of bass fishing the last few years rookies took over yeah, the sport of bass fishing. new guys a, a yeah. younger generation but we saw two anglers last year Brandon Cobb and Kyle Welcher two guys who would not stake a claim as being technological gurus, yet they learned what their weakness was. They made that a strength, and Kyle Welcher got the best of Brandon Cobb at the end of the season. But two fantastic events. I think uh, Welcher and Stetson Blaylock were the only anglers to make all nine day three cuts and fish most of the season. So what a phenomenal year. Like you said, it took us everywhere. We broke the century mark. We broke the smallmouth records. That was something we expected, and it happened. It's going to be hard to top in 2024, but it's time to get on to 2024. Let's take a look at this season starting out in Texas. How do you sort of break this season as we look at the schedule? How do you break it down? Well, when you look at Louisiana and Texas to start off the first two weeks of the season, that is late February, early March. So it could be warm in those regions of the country or very cool. But for Toledo Bend and Lake Fork, Big Bass, those are both Century Club opportunities. We kind of look at the schedule immediately, Tommy, and we put little asterisks beside lakes we think could break 100 pounds. Toledo Bend is on a, a rise. We saw that in the opens last year when they sure. fished there in April. Huge weight. 77 plus pounds for three days of fishing on pace for 100 pounds. So we could see that this time of the year. It's still conducive. It's cold, but there has been the opportunity for grass growth. So Toledo Bend could produce 100. So could Lake Fork. And really the thing is, is those are the first two that are predominantly and most likely the only ones that are pre spawn events. We normally start out in Florida where the spawn is lingering. These could be pre spawn events. So we'll see you're some cold. pre spawn. Okay. I would say that. Yeah, for sure. You're going to see some suspended fish and you're also going to see those colder water attempts even if fish are making their way to the bank most of them are still going to be in that pre-spawn phase so toledo been better than in past years lake fort bountiful as usual yeah that yeah that one's built correctly always florida a different time to go to florida going to st john's river once again and the harris chain but it's later in the season so what are the dynamics of that one thing i think of when i think of florida in april is stability every time we go there in january or february everyone wants to go there everywhere everywhere else in the country is frozen you want to go to florida to start your season but when you do that the opportunity for a cold front uh, for the moon to affect it as well you could have a moon phase coming in but a cold front hit and all these fish are stunted they're not on the bay they're not on the bank they're they're in between so it kind of creates an insta instable tournament atmosphere so april tells me we've had enough phases and spawns of uh, our waves of spawn that now anglers will be able to sight fish they'll be able to just go fishing and there'll also be some deep fish that maybe spawn in february that are now offshore then we go to south Carolina. I eavesdrop on a lot of your podcasts, Ronnie. And you have said this, and I agree with you. I think the best tournament of the year last year was Lake Murray. Lake Murray is one that you're going to catch numbers, and they were all big ones, Tommy. It is interesting. It's I believe it's the only blueback uh, herring lake that is all largemouth, no spotted bass. Like we see the Lanier's, the Hartwell's, the Smith Lakes, they have spotted bass and largemouth. Murray has just largemouth and their blueback herring feeders. So these fish chase and eat every single day of the year. You could go there in February and it would be a good tournament and going there in May that just provides more opportunity for uh, some different regions of the lake to factor. We had some sight fish in April last year at Lake Murray. Mm -hmm. This year maybe still some sight fish in May but most likely the tail end of that we're going to see those points play with top water. All those things we the double that we saw by Brandon Cobb yeah. on a jerk bait. Yeah, yeah. Those blueback herring patterns that a lot of our top 10 employed they will definitely come into fruition for most of people's game plans and it's early but you could see some of those deeper cane piles that we see factor in late June, July, August. Those could be a place where fish are already making their way out to. We got to get the Tennessee River in, and we are at Lake Wheeler, where we haven't been in a good while. Wheeler is kind of, I'll say it, the redheaded stepchild for the Tennessee River. It's the one that gets all the flack. It's because it's between a couple huge lakes that are water distributors. The water is going to flow from Gunnersville through Wheeler, and it's going to go through.
through Wilson very quick before it gets to Pickwick and Kentucky Lake where they can hold that water, bigger bodies of water. So Wheeler has a lot of fluctuation and, and flushing of the water. It's waters. a transient population. Yes, it, we've seen it before where it's had a lot of grass and we've seen the water get flushed through there so many times the grass doesn't take hold some years and there's no grass. But we know there's largemouth, there's smallmouth, and there's the Decatur Flats. So mid-June, we might have us a good old-fashioned Tennessee River ledge fishing tournament that we really haven't had in a long time. We've had the Tennessee River in the fall. We've had it early in the spring. Those summer beatdowns that we're used to seeing where that's competition, bumping boats sometimes for the best offshore spot, we're going to see that in June most likely. Our other herring lake is Smith Lake in Alabama. Will it be as good as Murray? That's That'd be a tough, uh, tough one to get over. I can't compare them as good or bad or, or better than or lesser than, they're going to be different because the weights you can catch, you can catch 20 plus pounds every day at Murray, all largemouth. You can catch 20 pounds a day on all spotted bass at Smith Lake, one of the best spotted bass lakes in the country. We know its connection and history to the California spots that grow really yeah. big. There's a little bit of distribution and trading that going off. Smith Lake has some big spotted bass. You'll also see what's very fascinating about this, the winning weight of this tournament, Tommy. It could be all spotted bass. There could be a mixture of spots and largemouth, or you could have a guy competing for the win that's maybe going all out on largemouth, maybe getting five or six bites a day, but he's up shallow in the backs of some of those creeks. You can spread out and go anywhere you want at Smith. So we could see guys all spotted bass, all largemouth, and we could see a mixture of both for sure. All right, two stops on our northern swing, and 90% of our audience watching here today is so familiar with them. Yeah, we know the book and how it's written for Champlain and the St. Lawrence River for the New York swing, Tommy, but we gotta keep going back there because every year it gets better and better. What is going on in New York with the smallmouth population and size is absolutely phenomenal. The introduction of gobies to the Great Lakes in that region of the country has made some of these fish sizes explode. Obviously, the conservation efforts by BASS and tournament organizations to take care of our catches has helped explode this population as well. And we saw Champlain reach heights it had not reached previously when Kyoya Fujita was neck and neck with Justin Atkins and Cody Huff last year. We saw also a change. That time of the year, we thought maybe largemouth, higher water levels, they could factor non-existent, non-factor at all. It would be hard pressed to say that someone's not going to find largemouth, but man, if you're not focused on the brown ones at the at Champlain or the St. Lawrence River, you're not fishing for first, you're not fishing for the top 10, you're fishing for your life. I think you've heard a lot of our opinions through this quick sketch, what was supposed to be a quick sketch of what's coming up in 2024. But when we come back, we'll get deeper and deeper into each of these great, great spots comprising our schedule for the upcoming year. That's how you start the day, baby! Woo! Welcome to Florida. Welcome back to the Bassmaster Lead Series 2024 preview show for the first time in, in a little while. We're not starting in the state of Florida. We're actually going right there on the Louisiana Texas border at Toledo Bend, a famous place in history. It was a place that was once a number one ranking Bassmaster, you know, top lakes in the country oh, yeah. mark for years. And then it's had a little bit of a downturn, but boy, 2023 in the opens, it showed us that Toledo Bend is back. We saw a bunch of 10 pounders in January caught in local tournaments and then on pace for the Century Club mark for three days through the opens, which was mid-April. This will be late February, though. Uh, yeah. yeah, the big word is the hydrilla is back, and that makes a big, big difference at Toledo Bend. We should see a lot of different approaches to catching them there, too, especially early on this year. Yeah, the last time we were here for an Elite Series event, it was around the April time period. There was a shad spawn going on. You could still fish a little bit deep. That kind of resembles what we just saw in the open in 2023. This being late February, it's right in between that that April time period I'm talking about and the college events that we normally have there in mid to late January. And that's the deal is these fish, it's not gonna be straight winter. These fish are gonna start to be more pre-spawn. Hey, Tommy, for the first time in a long time, we will have a pre-spawn Bassmaster Lead Series event to start the year, nothing around the spawn. Unless we've had an abnormally warm winter, which I don't think we will, Toledo Bend will show us a little bit different than we've seen in the past. So much of the history of tournament bass fishing has been written on this place since it was impounded back in the late 60s and exploded after then and it's great to hear that it's back and it's great that we're going there we're going to stay in texas for our second event as well kind of another well-known fishery yeah and a place that we have been multiple times but let's just say this tommy in the three or four times we've been there in the past we've never been there at the exact same time we've been there in april at lake fork i believe when brandon cobb won we were there in may when lee livesey mm -hmm. won we were there uh, uh, around that time period june may when lee livesey won again 
and then in the fall, November, when Patrick Walters won. So doing it last week of February, first few days of March, Lake Fork, we could see, like we say always, Century Club with the first two lakes. It's a possibility because those pre-spawn fish that come out of Texas and Louisiana, oh, yeah. they are big, they're ready to go. And once they make that push, once they get grouped up in an area, it could really be a fun Lake Fork. Hopefully a fish is a little bigger too, even though the water might be low in that winter time period. If it is normal water level, we could see people, you know, in the mid, mid portions of the pockets and on the main lake. Yeah, uh, we, we were there four times in a row from 2018 to 21, and the winner, at least in all of those, was a century mark. You, you're gonna, you can pretty much book a century mark. Assault this time as well. For sure, and Lake, I wonder how much, uh, you know, local history and knowledge somebody like Lee Livesey is gonna be able to have in February. The more we go to a place, the more these Elite Series anglers catch on, and the more they know about it, but like we said, different time of the year. We normally see these fish and they're sweating by the time we get there because it's so hot in Texas. It'll be much colder. We'll see some hoodies on in this tournament. Oh, it will be a great, great event. Then we get our promised trip to Florida and a place that everybody loves going, but we only have gone early, way earlier to the Harris chain. This will be a different Harris chain, but it'll still be that great place with all those different sorts of situations you can fit. There's two things when we start in Florida. The one great thing is everywhere else in the world is very cold and it's frustrating yeah. to fish sometimes, but also when you get to Florida early in the year, like a February or a late January, something like that, the cold fronts actually do hit Florida and they tremendously affect those weights and those fish. We saw the Harris chain in flux last time uh, when we kicked off our year at the St. John's and then the Harris chain. Right, yeah. Those fish were wanting to be on bed. There were some big ones on bed, but they weren't quite there. The winning weight just under 80 pounds, a little bit lower than our expectations. But April, Tommy, I'm excited to go to Florida in April. I don't know since I've been alive and the Elite Series has been formed. If we've been in Florida in April, it'll open up a lot of different things. You'll still see How's fish it on be the different? bed from when we would go in late January, early February. Well, the deal is, is that these fish oftentimes start spawning, you know, at some places in Florida around Thanksgiving. Maybe this is a little farther north than like a Lake Okeechobee. So maybe in Christmas time, January, they start spawning and it's so infrequent that they'll go all the way through May. So we'll see spawning fish in Florida all the way through May and beyond. So when we get to April, you'll still see some of those spawning fish. You'll see some of offshore fish develop. Maybe the grass is a little bit hardier, a little bit stronger, a little bit grown up in some places. And then obviously you'll have the people who want to just do what they do in Florida, find that grass, get on those lines, power fish. We'll obviously see some of those guys doing all the lakes as well. So many places you've got Griffin you can go to. We saw a Popka was popular last time. Little Harris and Harris. Uh, Harris was where it was won. And then you've got obviously Eustace, Dora, Beauclair, Carrollton, all those. You've got Carleton, all the connecting all canals, yeah, little backwater exactly. ponds, big lakes. And it's, it's just a great variety. It's always entertaining to go For there sure. and watch. And this time, two months later, than we were there last. Time. I think it really will spread the field out. We always will see an area where a lot of people are, but we should see a little bit more spread out. There should be some people in every lake represented, hopefully on the final day. Plenty of reasons to look forward to this 2024 season. We just saw three of them, including Toledo Bend, the giant lake down there in the border between Texas and Louisiana. Lake Fork, that's all you gotta say is Lake Fork. What a reputation. And then we take it down to Florida for the Harris Chain of Lakes. And Ronnie, we got more to come. We do. Stops four through six coming up. The Bassmaster Elite Series is sponsored by Humminbird. Mercury, Toyota, and by Ranger Boats. Welcome back to the Bassmaster Elite Series 2024 preview show for our Elite Series nine stop season. Last segment we got to talk about stops one, two, and three of the season. We're gonna kick it off with stops four, five, and six this go around. Still hanging in the state of Florida at a legendary body of water. The famous St. John's River, the premier river in Florida, 310 miles going south to north at our, at our host city, Palak. It turns into just a big wide estuary, basically. It changes character, so you can choose that 
or you can choose all the lakes downstream and the and the uh, open river as well uh, george uh, woodruff dexter and all those lakes down there lots of historic places yes and one thing we see tommy there's there's two things you're either going to go way back in a canal or a dead end canal and and fish for those residential fish or those fish that have pulled up to spawn or we've seen in the past you just stay on the main river look for some shell bars look for some places like that if you're over in rodman if that's available in play then you know you maybe fish a little bit deeper off those drops off the standing timber things like that but in april i think we're going to have a wide variety of things available to these anglers you're not going to just see the dead end canal fishing or the shell bar fishing out on the main drag you're going to be able to see a mixture of things you'll see some of the swampy areas play you'll see some of those lakes down below play you'll probably see crescent play a little bit but being able to not be in a jacket, let's just say, I don't want to curse it in April, but not necessarily in your winter coats at the St. John's River, it's going to open up a lot of things. We'll probably see topwater fish other than those slow moving topwaters. We'll probably actually see good topwater fishing at the St. John's River, which I'm super excited Fingers about. Fingers crossed, no fog delays. It'll be warmer. Yes. We get a better yeah, outlook yes. there as well. So it'll 100%. be a lot of fun. I think this is, uh, this is the 24th time that the Bassmasters have been to uh, the St. John's River. Very much looking forward to it. It would be the fourth year in a row. Right? Yeah. One of the one of the places that I guess is dubbed as Bassmaster HQ South because we're always at the St. John's River. But like we said, different time of the year. I'm excited, just like Toledo Bend. Toledo Bend went down a little bit, coming back up. Hopefully, we could part, be a part of the conservation aspect and the rise of the St. John's River once again. All right. Well, that takes us to almost to the halfway point of the season. We go up to South Carolina. Wow, we hadn't been to Lake Murray for 11 years previous to the, our visit in 23, and it was gangbusters. It was terrific. We were so blown away. We wanted to do it again, this time a little bit different. Like you said, we, norm, we came out of the Classic and fished in South Carolina in April. This is going to be early portions of May, the first 10 or so days of May. Excited to see how Murray fishes there. You won't necessarily have a bunch of sight fish on bed. We saw that was how it was won by Drew Benton in 2023. We saw that start to fade for some anglers each day, though. They were worried that those, those, you know, the waves of spawners weren't going to be there. I got a feeling with it being May, a little bit more summer vibes, even though it's not to the full extent of heat yet. You'll be able to see that herring spawn probably going on. Maybe Further down the lake, maybe the herring. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. that you'll do that. And then I think that those rivers will actually factor a little bit more. But those fish feeding on the herring, those main lake ones from, I guess, Drear Island down towards the dam, they've gotten so big, Tommy. We blew it out of the water in 2023. I'm excited for 2024. Yeah, it was only the second time time we had been there since 2011 or this will be the second time since 2011 so glad we got it back in the rotation i think everybody's a big fan of that now a place another place we haven't been to in a while i think 2016 was wheeler lake or 2017 at wheeler lake in alabama no you were right the first time 2016, 2016. we saw takahiro pull out a big swim bait on the decatur flats oh, i yeah. mean if there's a nostalgia factor of it it's a discontinued swim bait with an old school angler on a place oh, that is the, so famous that so wheeler lake. iconic place the giant giant ledge giant flat there what we do forget in that tournament, though, is Dave Fibra and some other guys were catching a really good flipping bushes. So the opportunity there, uh, it presents itself that you don't just have to be on the Decatur Flats to maybe win this event. Maybe some smallmouth factor in. Early ledge fishing, no doubt. It should be prime. Um, those schools should be getting big there. I think that, honestly, we saw a good uh, mixture of weight, high weights and then a little bit of consistency for the Wheeler Lake Open in 2023. We got to see the, the EQ anglers fishing there. Excited to go back to Wheeler, showcase it on Bassmaster Live with the 100 best anglers in the world. Sometimes Wheeler doesn't get enough publicity because it's <laughs> in between Gunnersville and Pickwick and that and Wilson, Wilson and Wheeler. But good lakes, good solid place to have a tournament. Looking forward to that. With how many people fish in this part of the country, this is a place that you, ha you can't avoid. If you're an Alabama angler and you're fishing local, you can't avoid Wheeler. You're going to have to fish there. I mean, excited to see you know Elk River other things playing as well Wheeler it's one of those places we've been there quite a bit compared to other places for the Elite Series I think yeah. this, oh, we've yeah. been there four times pre previously this is the fifth time we've been there for the Elite Series and like you said June time period should be a good one for sure having a lot of fun building our look at the upcoming season including the St. John's River down in Palatka Florida at a different time of year Lake Murray which was so fantastic last year in Columbia South Carolina and also a look at Wheeler Lake in Decatur Alabama haven't been there for a long, long time the Bassmaster Elite Series. Coming up next, a place we've never been before with the elites and more.
Welcome back. We're looking forward to the 2024 season. We stay in Alabama for the next event. You talk about a lake that we haven't been. We've never been there with the elites, believe it or not. Yet Smith Lake is one of one of one of the favorites of so many anglers that fish the elites here. Yeah, this is going to be we, we get our, you know, our blueback herring taste in May with Lake Murray. Murray. We get it once again here at Smith Lake. Vastly different though. There are big largemouth up in the creeks, but a lot of spotted bass. We're going to see the clear water offshore fishing really come into play at Smith Lake. I'm excited to see what June has to hold. June may be a tough period of time in respect. We can't have nine events in April where the fishing's no, no, great everywhere. You're going to have to go different places. And so for Smith, you can catch them. There's going to be anglers catching them over 100 feet of water probably, Tommy. And then you'll also have people competing with the same exact weights up in five inches of water in the backs of creeks. We're going to see some and the opportunity to really get away from people. I look at this map, pick where you want to go. You're probably going to find a creek to yourself for sure. Haven't been there since since an Elite 50 event wow. back in 2005. Before that, a tour event in, in 2004. So we are we are going to re-update Smith Lake for everyone. This and this week. is another place that we normally come, you know, with the Opens or College Series around that February time period, maybe March, right after a classic, that, that region of time. Being June, different look than we've seen. Maybe same banks, but it's going to look a lot different the way they catch them and uh, win this tournament. Yeah, a big spot of bass. I'm always yes. look forward to I'm that. Excited. Now, then we got then we've got our northern swing. It was three events this past year in 2023. We have two this time, but they're the two biggies. It's Lake Champlain to start. Yes, we're going to have about a month off or a month and a half off from the Smith Lake and the Alabama swing over with Wheeler and Smith before we head up to New York to finish out our swing. Lake Champlain, Plattsburgh, New York. We got to see the highest winning weight we have seen at Lake Champlain ever and it absolutely put out some of the biggest fish we've seen. These smallmouth are getting so big. We talked about it. Do you do largemouth? Do you do smallmouth? This was the year with the water being high. Largemouth could factor. No, they couldn't. Nope. It was all smallmouth dominated. We saw these anglers really open our eyes to not only technology, but that these pelagic smallmouth are actively chasing over 50 to 100 feet of water at times over 40, 50 feet of water, and they are suspended just right underneath your trolling motor. Like just very, very shallow in the water column, but over deep water. We got to see them really be the carnivores that they are and chase around um, all those alewife and stuff. Opened a whole new population. I, do you see any anything changing for, for this, by the time of year we're going to be there this I time? really don't. I think that the inland sea is always going to be a factor at Lake Champlain. I think we could see a little bit of New York play, uh, a little bit more. you got to kind of diversify yourself a little bit. There's always a place like we saw at Lake St. Clair, like we saw at Champlain, where the biomass is, like Mark Zona likes to call it, yeah. where all of the bait fish, all of the life, all of the, the bass are going to be honed in on. It happened to be in that island region of the Inland Sea. It could be in a different place this time around, but the Inland Sea will always house one or two at least in the top 10. We, we always uh, we always pitch it as being you can do everything from from a picture frog out, out <laughs> yes. the, in the grass to drop shots. It was half true this time around. Yes. Yeah, yeah we yeah. saw if you were catching them on a frog up in the grass, you probably didn't make yeah, the cut, except for I think Scott Canterbury went and had fun one day after he made the cut. Um, I think that we hopefully could see some largemouth come into play. Maybe those big ones come into play. But one thing we need to watch out for, every time you come to Lake Champlain, you better have an area close to the ramp that's protected because when it gets rough, we could either have a postponed day like we did this last time or lose a day altogether. You want to make sure at least if we go in rough conditions and you don't want to go 40, 50 miles, you better have something close on the New York side that you can feel confident in. All right, the grand finale, the big wrap up is going to be, of course, at the St. Lawrence River Lake, Ontario. What a fantastic tournament we have had there. Oh, I guess the last 10 times we've been there. Yes. Just unbelievable. And it gets better every time. Wash, rinse, repeat. But the one thing that's different this time, Tommy, and I'll point to it down here, Waddington, right. New York, something that's different, but it, it remains the same. Waddington was the place that opened our eyes to the love of the St. Lawrence River way back in 2013 when the elites first came here. We got to see Brandon Pollock make a long run, win the event, do something different that no one else thought they'd do. Now, Tommy, I'm not sure with what at this point in time what the what the playing field will be if Lake Ontario is fully in play or not, or if it's just river based. If it if the lake's in play, we talked about it off camera. Normally, maybe 10, 12 people would go all the way from Waddington if the lake's open. I'd expect half our field to probably oh, try okay. to make that run. Absolutely. But if, the, if it is river exclusive, we saw a great winning weight, 70 plus pounds. This year in the opens, it was about a month earlier than what it'll be here, but it was river exclusive, over 70 pounds for three days of fishing. If it is river exclusive, 
I'd expect them to still catch them. We'll still see them in those, some of those places. Ogdensburg, you'll see north of takeoff, the area close adjacent to Waddington. You'll see all of those places all the way down to Cape Vincent. We know people in the mouth of the lake. If you can't go to the lake, get as close as you can to it, and you're probably going to be successful. That's rule of thumb. You could possibly have that. Of course, now if the lake is in play, just Man. think about what we've seen. The last, in 2022, we were there. Two, two anglers over 100 pounds. First time ever for full smallmouth, 20 smallmouth. Uh, in Bassmaster history, this time around, the top four. That's it. That's the way yes. this place has progressed. It's it's like double redoubles itself every year. It's exploding. And if Kyle Welcher didn't have mechanical issues on the final day and lose half of his fishing day, he was four ounces oh, yeah. from adding a fifth century belt in 2023 at the St. Lawrence River in Lake Ontario. If they do make that run, though, Tommy, I will say, if you're out of Clayton and you run to the lake, that's a short drive. You got a lot more fishing time than you would have normally. You can put your, you know, you can have a slow portion of your day and still catch a big bag. If you're coming from Waddington, you have to be on point. You have to make that run perfect. You have to get out there and capitalize quick because you're not going to have a lot of time to run, especially, let's just say if the river's calm, you get to the mouth and it's really gusting out on the lake, it's going to be troublesome for some guys who have put all their marbles in that basket. If it is river exclusive uh, or if for the guys who stay in the river, they could probably compete with the lake guys if the lake guys only have, you know, two or three hours to be able to get it done. We love to see them all strategizing, <laughs> heavily, heavily trying to win a tournament. Hey, we can see those shallow guys, the Kennedys, the Lowens, the fighters, those guys who have made their work shallow. This is a, a solid time that it can still be done. Um, and if they're up in the river, they can probably make it happen. Well, St. Lawrence River and a guy who's uh, going to be a big favorite next year on the Best Master Elite Series, of course, Patrick Walters. So that concludes our look at all nine stops for the 2024 Tournament Trail. When we come back, though, we're going to get into personalities, people who are going to make a difference uh, speculatively. When we come back, Ronnie Moore and myself with Anger of the Year and Rookie of the Year. The Bassmaster Elite Series is sponsored by Yamaha. Rapala. Progressive Insurance. Nitro Boats. And by Power Pole. Thanks for being with us on the Bass Masters. Ronnie Moore, Tommy Sanders here. We just finished kind of going over our fantastic schedule. Bass Master Elite Series 2024, all those locations. We didn't get too specific, though, Ronnie, about whom we expect to do well in this. How should we go about that? Well, the recipe for a Bass Master Angler of the Year winner at the end of the season, nine events, who's going to win Angler of the Year? You have to have basically a blemish-free season. You have to have a season with maybe one slip-up at most, but most seasons, Tommy, you can't have have a slip up at all and for the last couple winners of our angler of the year race they have had a perfect season so let's take a look at our last couple champions scott canterbury clark winlet brandon polonix seth fighter and kyle welcher Wally, that's a giant that's a giant got you Woo! that's what we're talking about Scott Canterbury shoots out the lights. Scott Canterbury joins a league of legends, becoming a Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Scott Canterbury, a phenomenal 2019 season. He was the Bassmaster Angler of the Year, never finishing outside of the top 50 all season long. His first year on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Another guy who has plenty of Angler of the Year titles and wanting to get another one in 2020 was Clark Winlet, starting off strong with a top 20 down in the state of Florida, backing it up just a few months later because we had a delay in our season at Eufaula in Alabama, a top 10 finish there. He was headed in the right track as we headed north for our season. Clark Winlet may be from Tennessee, but he is a phenomenal smallmouth fisherman, and he showed it in our northern swing, doing a good finish at the St. Lawrence River and then backing it up at Lake St. Clair as well, both of those where he made Championship Sunday. Clark Winlet, no flaws in his game in the 2020 season at all. Up to this point, 
but we knew with our delay in the season, COVID pushing our schedule back, we had to go into the fall. And this fall gauntlet was a tough one. Lake Gunnersville, Santee Cooper, Chickamauga and Lake Fork, those were gonna be true tests in the fall where the fishing isn't easy at all. He survived Lake Gunnersville with a late flurry on one of his last competition days. It kept him in the hunt for Angler of the Year. But the survival really came at the next event, Chickamauga. He only caught one fish on day one. That plummeted him down the leaderboard, yes. made Angler of the Year look bleak, but luckily he was able to survive that event, stay in contention, and head to his home state. Lake Fork was where he sealed the deal in 2020 for the Angler of the Year award, winning that prestigious award that many anglers fight their whole career and desire to get. Your 2020 Bassmaster Elite Series Angler of the Year, Clark Wendland. With over $2.2 million in earnings with BASS, he has had a storied career. But Clark Winlet in the year of 2020, overcoming so many obstacles, so many delays, what an odd season it was, but he persevered and he took home the coveted Bassmaster Angler of the Year title. Leading into one of the best seasons we have ever seen from an Elite Series Pro, and that was from Seth Fighter. The Minnesota native came down Hey, he had to learn the southern fishing. That was one of his weaknesses early on in his career. It was a stumbling block. He got out of Florida with a top five finish, third place in Palatka at the St. Johns River. Off to a great start. You survived Florida, you now know. I can now win Angler of the Year if I keep it up through the rest of the events. And he took it to the Tennessee River as well. A top 25 at Pickwick leading into the middle of our season. Come here, oh, just barely. Yes, yes. Let's go, let's go. Big. Oh God, oh God. Come on, let's go, let's go. Phenomenal southern swing for Seth Fighter, and this is a place that we knew he was not gonna slip, the northern swing, Lake Champlain. Hey, he's gotten top tens there with smallmouth, he's gotten there with largemouth. He has Lake Champlain unlocked, and it was a great finish for him. Never worse than 25th all season long in 2021, yeah. and he had sixth or better four different times during his season. Once we got to the St. Lawrence River, it was just a formality. If he showed up there and got in the top half of the field, Angler of the Year was his, and we knew Seth Fighter. He was going to be in it to win it and have a great finish at the St. Lawrence River once again. Freaking five pound smallies on a chatterbait. Clark Wendland to do the handoff. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a season long battle. Started with 95 anglers and then there is one. That one is Seth Fighter, the 2021 Bassmaster Elite Series Angler of the Year. I got her. I got her. Come here, in the mouth. I got her. I got her. Gosh. Brandon Polinick, his 2022 season was one for the record books. He normally starts out slow in Florida. He had a great Florida swing, a third place finish to Santee Cooper. When we got to Lake Fork, he was able to break the Century Club, eclipsing 100 pounds for four days of competition. That was a solid start, which led to a great season. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's a bass. Yes. I got two. Yep. I got two. Get in here. Dang it. Oh, yes. Look at that one. In 2022, the prodigy prevails and becomes the 2022 Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Brandon Polinick, truly the king of the court this year. The prodigy prevails. Good man, to a big. Get up in here, baby. After a strong start at Okeechobee and even Lake Seminole, we went to Santee Cooper where we got to see Kyle Welcher 
really make a run for that Angler of the Year award in the year of 2023. Kyle Welchery has been one who has been on our radar for an Angler of the Year push early in his career, had a bad 2022 season and came back with vengeance this year. Sabine Rivers right up his alley and he was in our top 10 up until the final day of competition. Then we go up to the Northern Swing where we were a little concerned about how Kyle Welcher could do at Lake St. Clair, Lake Champlain and the St. Lawrence River, but he was absolutely phenomenal. Never missing a cut out of 100 of the best pros in the world, always was in the top 40 of competition. And Kyle oh Welcher gosh. put his stamp on a great 2023 season. In 2023, the progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year belongs to Stone Cold Kyle Welcher. Our last five Progressive Angler of the Year winners. Pretty impressive group right there. And Ronnie, it's up to us now. Or I'll have to put it up to you. Why don't you make some picks for who's going to win Angler of the Year this year? That's a hard call with 103 anglers that are all capable to win this award. But we always see it, Scott. you got to start off strong early in the season. You can rarely have a 100th place finish. Brandon Polinick's done it, but I'm not going to put him to the test to have to do that again. So you got to start off strong. I feel the low-hanging fruit is uh, Patrick Walters. He hasn't won an Angler of the Year yet, but in his five seasons, the five Angler of the Years that beat him out the last few years of his career, he finished 16th, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and another 3rd. So basically every year of his Elite Series career, he's been in the top five at some point in the season. I think in that 16th place year, he led Angler of the Year until the Northern Swing, and he fell off at the end of the year. So Patrick Walters took, we saw a weakness. His smallmouth game was his weakness. He took that and made it a strength by winning the St. Lawrence River last year to end our season. Otherwise, he's rocked rock solid. He's been great in Florida. We've known he's won at Lake Fork, uh, and then he's got one in his home state, Lake Murray. That's where he went to college at the University of South Carolina. I don't think that he's going to slip up at a Wheeler or a Smith. I think he's going to be right there from the beginning of the season to the end. And honestly, this could be the year he finally breaks through and gets off the schneid of terrible finishes in the top five without winning. You know, that's a bad season for Patrick Walters. We, how do we bracket it? Sixth, seventh? Is that a bad finish for him in AOI? He has been flawless. And I'll throw out three other names, Tommy. Okay. If you had to you know, some other wild cards, some other guys to consider that you maybe wouldn't see in the top five of AOI uh, in past years, but that could do it this year. I think Kenta Kamira, Lee Livesey, and Jacob Rosnick are three anglers that have the recipe with our schedule, with some blueback herring lakes, with some smallmouth, with some Texas and Louisiana, big fish capital of the world places early in the season. And then Florida, which is a place that trips them up. All three of those anglers have shown good success in Florida at times. They've had wins in the state of Louisiana and Texas and then obviously have figured out the smallmouth enough to do and be successful there. We saw Kenta in the season with a top 10 at the St. Lawrence River. So I think those are my three wild cards and my one uh, that I would hedge my bets on is Patrick Walters and then you've got Kenta Kamara, Lee Livesey and Jacob Porosnik. Sounds good to me. Tommy, I'm not going to leave you what? hanging either. You got to pick a couple. Any guys maybe same or different from mine? Well, uh, the same low hanging fruit. I'm Patrick Walters, although I, I kind of see a season where Patrick Walters and Kyle Welch are the two in the battle all season long. There's a lot of that. I, I, it's hard to pick who's going to do well down in Texas, our first two events, except Lee Livesey, of course, and, um, but Patrick Walters also there, too. Florida, I think they're both very capable there, and they've proven that they can finish up in strong fashion on the northern swing. I think it could be those two. I have one outlier, and that is Kyoya Fujita. I mean, he is such an unknown entity, and he is such a different sort of person. Nothing seems to phase him. He does not speed up when the pressure's on. He is uh, in, incredible with his electronics. I don't know what he can't do well. I don't know a place where he can't win. I feel like it's going to be weird at the end of Kyoya Fujita's career that he didn't win Rookie of the Year his first year because how good Joey Sefuentes did. Basically losing by just a handful of points, winning an event, having four top tens as well, a couple top threes. I like those picks in Kyoya Fujita. And Kyle Welcher, if he was to go back-to-back, we haven't had a back-to-back -back Angler of the Year in a long time. That would be very impressive. Say, well, the, uh, the year before he won uh, 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 Angler of the Year, he was second in the Classic. So I think there, there may be a guy who's on track to, to do just that. We'll, we shall see. It's all speculative at this point. we got more speculation on the way. We're going to take a look at the new rookies, the new faces on the tour in the upcoming year, and who might be the pick to win Rookie of the Year. The Bassmaster Elite Series is sponsored by Minn Kota, Skeeter Boats, Bass Pro Shops, and by Dakota Lithium.
Welcome back. Great to have you with us on the Bassmasters today. We're looking forward to the 2024 season. It is imminent right around the corner. We've been through all our locations, Ronnie Moore. We have looked at potential winners of the Angler of the Year prize. Very, very important. And all that's left is Rookie of the Year. What do you think? Well, I think that that's one of the tightest races. You know, at times when we've had maybe an Angler of the Year runaway, somebody winning by 20, 30, 40 points, and we lose interest a little bit for a moment of time, Rookie of the Year keeps us engaged. It's always a tight race, high quality uh, anglers that are coming in for their first year. That's really the, the biggest thing. When you go to a new school, you want to make sure you have a good impression your first day or two. Well, these guys have made a good impression their whole first year. And every year, Tommy, it seems we say, this is the best rookie class we've ever seen. They add to a great Elite Series field, and this is the best Elite Series field we've ever seen. Well, every year it does get stronger and stronger. And I will say, before we get to our Rookie of the Year picks, the changes we've made in the Bassmaster Opens is probably why these rookies are going to be getting better and better every season. With our change from three event qualification to all nine events you have to fish to qualify, we're going to have much more well-rounded anglers. We're going to have anglers well-traveled across the country. They're going to be diverse in their backgrounds and backdrops, and they're going to be experienced on a lot of playing fields that maybe they'll see in the future. I think there could be some crossover for sure. I think one of the rookies this year, Ben Milliken, said, I've been to four of the nine Elite Series events and fished tournaments there. So you got you think about these rookies yeah. that it's their first year on the job, and they've already got maybe 50% of the schedule at least experienced there. And so when we look back at this past season's rookies, oh they gosh. were not only good, they were great. Joey Safuentes winning Rookie of the Year, Tommy, and winning two events in a season, winning Lake Seminole and Lake St. Clair. And barely winning the title. And barely winning over Kyria Fujita. That was crazy. And, and Joey was a first-year elite. He had experience on a national level just a few years over on other professional yeah. tours, but not enough money earnings to consider yeah. himself something other than a rookie. He was still very new to the scene. So he took that experience, built on it, and became a two-time champion in his first season, both in impressive fashion. And then you think about the guys who have that local advantage. These rookies fish close to home most of their life, and this is their first chance to go on a national stage. Will Davis took all of the lessons he learned at Lay Lake over the years to win against the best names in the world. We always said that you want to play against Kobe Bryant or LeBron on a hoop you've shot on your whole life. That maybe is the one familiar place. That is exactly what Will Davis did. He beat the best on his home body of water. And then we think about Kyoyo Fujita, somebody who after eight events of the season, we were saying it's long overdue for a victory because he had so many shots those first seven or eight events and he didn't get a win that finally getting one at Champlain last year kind of put a exclamation point on his great season. He is coming back and fishing all nine elites and all nine opens. He's going to be a monster. So that was our rookie class that really shined. And think about it. We had seven rookies make the classic out of our 10 rookies. That was phenomenal. I can't remember anything even close to that before. I don't know how we're going to top it this year, but our class is absolutely phenomenal. The youngest we've ever had as well. I think everyone is in the, the age of the 20s, except for one or two that are maybe in their 30s. Uh, I've got to go with John Garrett. He got second in the Opens Angler of the Year race after that long season. I think that John's got a l enough touring travel experience fishing the opens for four to five years and breaking through this year he traveled a bunch with the college series and was highly successful there oh yeah big i college think that group. john's been to a lot of these places but he's also he's had some adversity it wasn't just a my first year in the opens i qualified for the elite series type of deal he's dealt with some crucial losses some close wins different things like that i think that john's gonna be able to take that and be a little steady eddie on the elite series next year what about you tommy I'm going to go with JT Tompkins. I mean, a guy, nine open events. He, he finishes in the top 25 in seven of them. How, how can you not be prepared to win Rookie of the Year with a, with a title like that? An average finish for JT Tompkins of 17th place. And like you said, how close the Rookie of the Year race was last year. John Gary gets second in points and has an average finish of 18th. So those guys still, after nine events, had one point differential per tournament difference. It was about a single point or a single digit deficit for John Garrett to JT. So we did pick a little bit of low hanging fruit, but they showed us enough in the opens last year on Bassmaster Live to really trust what we're going to see on the elites next year. I, I figure most of our guys are going to get big time mentions during the course of the season on Bassmaster Live, but just to make sure they get their mention, I'm going to read their names off yes, right now. Sure. Just, just to get them out there, JT Tompkins, John Garrett, Trey McKinney, Robert G, Tyler Williams, Wesley Gore, Logan Parks, Ben Milliken, Kyle Patrick, and Timothy Dew. Yeah, the, day, the nation, the opens, all producing great anglers. It's going to be a great 2024 Bassmaster Elite Series season, adding these 11 new guys to the, the crop of very experienced guys and guys we know a lot. One thing's for sure, Tommy, I think we know a lot more about these 
11 guys than we have any other rookie class coming in. So we're really dialed in on what to expect from these guys. They're gonna, we're gonna see plenty in the top 10 this season. And hopefully by this point in the show, we all know more about what's coming up in the 2024 season. Look forward to seeing and enjoying it with you all season long. And we will see you right here next time on the Bassmasters.